Okay, Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon. So, this is the lecture two entitled Livestock Industry. Okay, so now let's take a look at the introduction for this lecture. So, we have the livestock. Okay, livestock here refers to the farm animal. For example, we have uh, cattle, sheep, pigs, goats, horses, donkeys and mule. Mule is actually the uh, male donkey and we... He, apa? We... Uh, what we call that our male donkey plus female horse we call it as uh, mules so this is the type of livestock okay so the livestock is actually an important industry as it can supply the largest source of protein for malaysian population so we depend on the livestock for our uh, protein sources our main protein sources okay so the farm value for this industry was estimated around rm uh, 14 slight <laughs> Uh, to last, see, I told you. <laughs> okay, it's okay. In that case, I will uh, minimize. So, uh, kalau macam ni, okay. This uh, kind of slide, okay. Can you view? Yes. yes. Uh, okay, yes. so I think something, some problem with the slide when I make it uh, apa, a full screen, uh, it gets stuck. Okay, so let's continue. So, we have, so this is the estimated value, value of our um, uh, livestock. 14.1 billion. Actually, this is the figure in 2013. So, actually, it is uh, contributed mainly by the poultry meat. Okay, poultry meat is actually the ch uh, meat by chicken, duck, turkeys and geese. So, this is the poultry meat. And then livestock is this uh, animal. Cattle, sheep, pigs and so on. So, you can differentiate between these two terms here, yeah? poultry and livestock. Okay, in general, the livestock production is still an inadequate to meet the demand following the increase in population and consumption. So, means that uh, the current livestock production still cannot uh, fully occupy, uh, fully um, fulfill the current demand because we are increasing in the, in the number of population. So, tak cukup ya, yeah? kita punya livestock production currently and uh, that's why there's still uh, many way uh, more uh, to go. Okay, so we have two categories of livestock. We can uh, classify it into two categories. The first one is ruminant. Ruminant is actually the herbivorous mammals. And the second one is non-ruminant, which is uh, it have little or no ability to digest and absorb fiber. For example, chicken, horses, and pigs. So this is the categories of livestock. Okay, now let's take, uh, take a look on the uh, food policy. We have the national agro-food policy that um, specifically focus on the livestock uh, industry. Okay, so we have the production of meat and meat-based product that increases every year. Okay, the production, walaupun tak boleh nak cater the total uh, demand, tapi we are increasing the production from year to year. So this is the figure projected to achieve 2.1 million metric ton in 2020 with a growth of 2.7% per annum yeah, uh, yearly. So this is what we expected. Uh, actually, this figure already um, uh, happened or occurred last year, 2020. Okay, And the demand for beef is increasing every year. Yeah? Uh, demand untuk uh, beef ni semakin meningkat every year following the, okay, same lah, following the increase of population and consumption per capita. Okay, nak buat apa macam-macam lah uh, daripada beef ni whether the meat apa beef uh, based products and so on okay egg all, uh, production is also expected to increase uh, from the following figure 540,000 metric ton in 2010 until 2020 so we expected that the egg production also uh, supposed to increase to meet the uh, population's demand Okay, now let's take a look on the ruminant. Okay, livestock which are included in the category are of ruminant. Ah, okay, as I uh, uh, stated earlier, we have the cattle, sheep, buffalo, goat, and deer. So, so this is the ruminant categories. Okay, ruminant subsector are in small scale. Yeah, small scale saja and generally produced by small holders, uh, small holder farmers. So that's why uh, we are still. Um, running out we are still uh, uh, not enough uh, pro uh, livestock production for the ruminant because it's only run by the small scale uh, farmers okay so uh, the industry is growing rather slowly uh, so very slow yeah sangat slow yeah this industry is quite slow uh, from this period 1996 until 2002 and then it became uh, it began to uh, grow rapidly in the following years 2005 until 2012 
Okay, so this is because we have the effort and initiative of the government. So, for example, we have the policy, national agro-food policy that uh, stress, uh, that strengthen this uh, livestock production. Okay, so that is the uh, statistic for the Malaysia pro upper production of the uh, beef. Yeah, you can just uh, read in 2013. Okay, so this is the example of the ruminant. Yeah, contoh contoh ruminant lah, you know. Okay, so this is the figure that shows the livestock population in a peninsula Malaysia in 2018. So, just, I'll just give you this figure for your uh, information. So, for example, we have the kerbau or buffalo, uh, beef cattle, dairy cattle and so on. And then following the uh, states that produce this uh, livestock. So, you can see... Um, Okay, you can make a comparison between this figure, for example, in Perlis and Kedah, so which uh, state that uh, uh, read the highest number of the buffalo, for example, so you can make a comparison. And then the percentage here, for example, you can see that in 2018 and 2017, so there's a... This is the uh, decrement, ya, yeah? semakin mengurang, ya, yeah? punya percentage untuk buffalo ni, similar to the beef cattle also, uh, di, apa, decrease, ya, yeah? uh, sebanyak 8 point, no, no, decrease, oh, yelah, yeah, uh, 5.3%, so nampak semakin berkurangan dia punya production, so you can make a comparison for other uh, livestock populations. Okay, this one is for the livestock population in the uh, from the 2009 until 2018. Uh, so you can see that, uh, for example, kita ambil satu contohlah uh, buffalo. Okay, 2009, 79 and something. So it become decrement, semakin berkurangan for 2018. So kita nampaklah secara umumnya penghasilan apa livestock production ni semakin berkurangan. Okay, so you can make a general uh, comparison based on this table yeah, for the other uh, livestock population. Okay, now let's take a look on the non-ruminant. Okay, so non-ruminant is uh, categorized uh, to chicken, duck, pig and eggs. Yeah, eggs also included under non-ruminant. Okay, so non-ruminant industry is actually very progressive, large-scale production compared to the ruminant and it, its ex farm or the value farm contributed to more than 80% of the livestock industry in Malaysia. Maksudnya, more than 80% of our livestock industry is contributed by this non-ruminant industry. Okay, we have poultry meat and eggs that dominate the local non-ruminant production. So, kita ada poultry meat dan juga eggs yang uh, paling banyak lah, yang paling dominant uh, bagi apa pasaran uh, market uh, non-ruminant kita. Okay, and then it, it, it's, it's already reached more than 100% self-sufficiency. Nanti kita tengok what is meant by the self-sufficiency followed by swine. Okay, so poultry meat production has increased. Okay, so that is the figure. It, it has increased from 1.3 million metric ton in 2010 to 1.5 million metric ton in 2013. Okay, so that is the increasing rate of the poultry meat production in our country. Okay, with a growth rate of 12.5% uh, per annum or yearly. Okay, this is what we call that uh, self-sufficiency level or we can uh, summarize it as SSL. So, it can be defined as the ability of someone to supply his own need without any aid from the others. So, in our case, kita boleh uh, produce our own... Uh, uh, production, stock production, for example, for the eggs and uh, poultry meat without importing from other countries. So that is the SSL. Okay, in the context of the livestock industry in Malaysia, SSL refers to the ability of the local production, uh, local production to supply the demand by localized consumers and also it can be measured by percentage. So that is uh, when we... Um, when we interpret the SSL uh, meaning in our country, okay? Okay, so that is the example. For example, if the local production of beef is only able to supply about 30% of the local consumption, the SSL for beef production is said to be 30%, yeah? So if the percentage exceeded 100%, this shows the local production exceed the local consumption. So it means that uh, we have exceeded more than 70% uh, of the local consumption because we managed to produce 100% while the local needed is only 30%. Okay, so this is we uh, said that the local production is exceeded the local consumption. 
Okay. Next, let's take a look on the issues and challenge of livestock industry. Okay, the first one is lack of quality breeds. Okay, so we are a kind of lacking the breeds with a high quality. For example, the local cattle and goat are small and produce low quality meat. So, kalau kecil, of course lah, dia akan menghasilkan uh, sikit je lah uh, daging kan. So, very, uh, ni lah, yield is very low. So, the low production of meat is related to the productivity per unit production and efficiency level in the farm production operation. So, if we uh, read a small uh, species or small uh, breed, so it can uh, produce the low quality of uh, or low uh, production. Okay, so and that is for the farm production lah. Uh, dapat sikit lah production dekat farm tu. So the major breed of beef cattle in Malaysia are Kedah Kelantan. Uh, so this is the uh, area of uh, Kedah Kelantan, KK. We uh, summarize as KK. This is uh, kata baka dia lah. Beef cattle in Malaysia, we have Kedah Kelantan. Baka untuk beef cattle or Brahman crosses and the European KK crossbreed. So this is uh, what we say that as a baka uh, yang kita um, uh, read in there in our country, a type of beef cattle that we read in our country. Okay, the KK cattle is the most important indigenous cattle in Malaysia. We have the KK cattle, okay, the indigenous lah, maksudnya dia memang ada kat negara kita. So, the, the cattle ni uh, is small size, huh? so ia sangat macam kecil lah. So, sikit je lah daging yang dihasilkan. So, the matured um, weight is around uh, 300 kilogram to 312 kilogram for male. Okay, so this is uh, for female, 219 to 240. So, kg lah, kilogram. Yeah, berat dia. Okay, whereas the comparison in mature weight of Brahman cattle from India is between 500 and 1,100 kilograms. So, you can see that this uh, uh, Brahman cattle is much, much more um, bigger and heavier compared to the uh, our indigenous cattle. Maksudnya, baka tempatan ni lebih kecil dan lebih orang kata ringan lah berbanding dengan baka daripada uh, India tu, Brahman cattle. Okay. So that's why kita kalau secara generally or locally, we are lack of quality bricks. Okay. And next, the second issue is higher cost of animal feed. Okay. So the main issue, this is the main issue that prevented the industry from growing is the cost of animal feed. Biasanya industri ni tak berapa berkembang sebab uh, higher cost lah. Maksudnya memerlukan uh, uh, cost quite costly lah for the farmers to uh, rear the uh, animal because Ah, uh, masam makanan dia agak mahal lah. For example, the cost of animal feeds account for more than twenty five percent of the total cost of production. So means means that untuk cost production saja twenty five percent tu adalah untuk uh, kita beli animal feeds. So it is quite costly. Okay, the cost of animal feed that contribute to the total cost of production is between 5.4% and 19.3% for cattle. So, inilah dia call punya cost lah. Jadi, buat secara kalau cattle, ini uh, percentage dia. Good, that is the percentage. 22.9 until 31.6 and um, 80... 80 uh, 58.9 until 71.2% uh, for poultry. So, that cost is that cost is quite a uh, costly uh, best, apa particularly for the poultry ah paling banyaklah dekat poultry ni nampak ni cost dia sahaja okay the main factor that contributed to the higher cost of animal feed is the raw material ah uh, kerana raw material which is imported from other countries so kalau kita guna bahan yang diimport ni memang agak mahal lah nanti so Memang tak ada pilihan. Uh, makanan tu akan jadi, makanan haiwan ni akan jadi mahal sebab kita guna raw material yang kita import daripada negara luar. Okay, so let's see. The main ingredient of animal feed is for example, corn. Kita import daripada Thailand, Argentina and also Brazil. So that's why it uh, have contributed to the higher cost of those animal feeds. And then we also lack of land area. Yeah? Grazing reserve are land officially allocated by the government for use by farmers to rare ruminants such as cattle, buffalo and goat. Maksudnya dia ada kawasan untuk ragut lah. Uh, okay, kerajaan dah sediakan. Ini kawasan untuk padang ragut let's say. However, our natural grassland in Malaysia has generally low productivity resulting to very poor carrying capacity. Okay, maksudnya uh, kita punya natural grassland kat Malaysia ni pun macam tak berapa nak subuh. Maksudnya rumput yang available pun tak berapa banyaklah yang boleh uh, dimakan ataupun diragut oleh uh, ruminan ni tadi. So that's why lah dia punya low productivity that resulting to the very poor carrying capacity. 
And besides that, this land also uh, undergo the competition in uh, in using land with other industry. Okay, for example, the industrialization. So that's why uh, tanah yang ada ni pun dah, dah uh, tak berapa nak subur, tak berapa nak ada rumput. Tapi uh, kita juga ber, apa, men, apa, mendapat persaingan daripada industri lain. Macam nak bina kilang ke apa ke. Dia guna juga tanah yang di-reserve untuk grazing area tadi. So that's why it has resulted to the lack of land to rear this um, uh, ruminants. Okay, normally farmers prefer to use their land for more productive agricultural apa, activities. Uh, biasalah petani kalau macam dia nak apa, kalau dia tanah sendiri dia lebih prefer nak buat untuk um, apa, uh, activity yang lebih menguntungkan, yang lebih produktif. Uh, macam palm oil, fruits. Uh, fruit tu macam durian. Uh, mungkin dia nak tanam musang king ke kan? Mahal kan? Berapa puluh ringgit sekilo kan? Uh, baik tanam musang king daripada bela uh, lembu rebau yang memang uh, tak berapa nak menjana pendapatan tu. So dia tukar tanah dia kepada itulah more uh, for the agricultural activity purpose and vegetable cultivation. Uh, tanam apa? Uh, chili ke something like that. Uh, so that is the preferable for the farmers. Okay, farmers also change their livestock activities from ruminant to poultry meat production that promise a better return on investment. Uh, see, macam saya cakap tadi, ruminant tu dia very slow growth kan compared to the poultry meat production. Sebabnya, farmers tu sendiri lebih prefer nak uh, tukar dia punya apa? Uh, tanah dia tu kepada poultry meat production. Nak, ben, uh, nak bina ladang-ladang untuk for the poultry meat ni. Okay, so that because poultry meat production ni uh, dia akan memberi pulangan yang lebih lumayan kepada uh, petani ataupun farmers itu tadi. Okay, next let's take a look on the policies that support livestock industry. Okay, so Malaysia, uh, our government has come up with a few policies that try to uh, support the livestock industry. Okay, so we will uh, discuss a few policies here that is related to the livestock industry. Okay, so we have uh, the third national agriculture policy from 1984 until 2010 and then we continue with the national agro food policy from 2011 until 2020. So this policy already expired last year, can I say. So let's take a look what this policy is doing. So this policy was designed specifically to ensure the industry remains significant as one of the important sector in its national economic growth. So this is the uh, role of this policy to memastikan this industry is uh, remain um, viable lah as one of the important sector in our uh, economic growth. Okay, so the increase the uh, it also this policy also help to increase the efficiency of the ruminant industry. So they try to increase the efficiency by uh, a few strategies. For example, try to increase the efficiency of meat production and become environmentally friendly. So uh, government encourage the uh, meat production with the environmentally friendly or sustainable farming something like that. Okay. So the efforts also focus on increasing productive ruminant population through effective breeding services. Ah, so maksudnya kalau bakal lembu tempatan tu macam kecil so kita try uh, interbreed. Ah, kita uh, breed tu dalam bahasa Melayu apa? Kita cuba biakkan dia, biak bakalkan dia dengan bakal yang lebih besar dan menghasilkan sama ada susu ataupun daging yang banyak. Ah, so that is one kind of effort by our government. So they have the research and development team to uh, carry out this um this plan, okay? So they also uh, improve quality of local breed through public private partnership research. Uh, macam saya mention tadi, mungkin baka yang uh, lembu tempatan yang lebih kecil ke ringan tu, daging kurang. So kita cuba apa, uh, breedkan dia dengan uh, baka luar lah. Baka, for example, Brahman from India kan. Uh, so this is based on the partnership research, whether from the R&D uh, institution or the university itself. Yeah? Kat universiti pun ada uh, lecturer-lecturer yang cuba uh, dapatkan grant untuk uh, biar bakakan uh, this uh, local breed to become a more uh, nila higher quality okay so this is the malaysia x farm price of livestock product from uh, 2018 yeah ini dia punya hasil lah so you can see we have the broiler or ayam daging ayam kampung puyuh process yeah that is the average uh, so from let's say january until december 
So for example, ayam daging kita akan tengok daripada Januari until December. So the pattern is sometimes naik, sometimes turun. So maksudnya permintaan tu bergantung kepada keadaan lah. Kadang mungkin kita boleh kaitkan dengan perayaan ke. Ha. So macam let's see December ni macam ada Christmas, perayaan Christmas. So banyaklah uh, permintaan kepada ayam daging ni nak buat apa, nak ayak um, ayam apa, nak buat um, tu lah makan-makan ke something like that. So you can relate with the festival okay, during that time lah. Okay, now let's take a look on the Malaysian dairy industry. Okay, so our Malaysia's dairy market has developed very positively yeah, with constant growth rates. Uh, this is for the dairy industry. Uh, while demand for dairy product has surged, domestic supply of meat has been kept to a minimum and has not been able to keep up with the increasing demand. Uh, so means that um, walaupun kita punya dairy market ni telah berkembang, tapi untuk dairy product, Uh, permintaan banyak tapi domestic supply kita tidak mampu untuk menampung ya yeah, uh, this increasing demand. Okay, so that's why the self sufficiency rate for milk for milk in Malaysia is about 5% with more than 90% of milk and meat product imported from abroad. So kita cuma boleh macam cater 5% sahaja kepada uh, pasaran uh, permintaan pasaran lokal kita. So uh, lagi 90% tu kita import daripada uh, mainly Australia and New Zealand lah. This is the main uh, main country that uh, imported or exported the dairy product okay a main reason uh, so why this uh, happen because uh, the tropical climate of malaysia which does not provide optimal condition for rearing dairy cattle so that the domestic supply of meat is very limited maksudnya uh, cuaca kan kita ni kadang panas hujan so tidak berapa sesuai lah untuk kita um, uh, apa uh, It's not suitable for the production of the dairy uh, uh, dairy uh, industry. Uh, so berbanding Australia and New Zealand, dia ada macam uh, sejuk kan kalau dia kan. So sesuai lah. Uh, so apa, cattle tu pun, for example, tidak stress lah. So boleh hasilkan banyak susu, something like that lah. Okay, land available for cattle farming is also limited. Uh, this is, I think we already discussed before, the limitation of the land for the grazing. So that's why the land avail uh, availability, a land available for cattle farming also become Uh, decrease ya yeah, berkurangan as a result the supply shortage ya yeah. so bila dah berkurangan of course lah we are a kind of short in our, in the supply so the prices for dairy product have continuously been on the high side in the past okay for example ah uh, tinggilah sebabnya bekalan kurang permintaan banyak so harga akan uh, mahal lah for example drinking milk currently usually range between nampak tu RM 6.5 until 10 per liter So agak mahal ya nak minum susu macam obli susu Dutch Lady yang apa kotak tu kan yang uh, 500 ml katakan ataupun 1 ml uh, full cream milk ke fresh milk ke so agak mahal ya satu kotak tu saya rasa yang 500 liter tu rasa dalam around 6, 6 ringgit and something dekat pada timur so this is kira mahal lah nak minum kan. Okay, recognizing the market potential, several dairy companies from abroad have seized the opportunity and have become active in the growing Malaysian dairy market. So, dia nampak company-company uh, ni from abroad, dia nampak opportunity untuk invest dekat negara kita sebabnya permintaan banyak tapi pengeluaran kurang. So, that's why dia pun cuba invest lah uh, apa, dekat negara kita. For example, we have Nestle, uh, very familiar. This uh, brand is very familiar with headquarters in Switzerland. So, dia punya HQ dekat Switzerland has been operating in Malaysia for around a century. Yang ramah dah. Dia dah ber, ber, apa, lebih kurang seabad dah dia uh, invest dekat negara kita and offers milk product for adults and children. Ada yogurt drinks and yogurts as well as well as confectionery. Uh, so this is the product of Nestle lah. So this one actually Nestle is from uh, Switzerland. Yeah? Dia punya HQ dekat Switzerland. Okay, so Dutch Lady, uh, so this is another one brand from uh, overseas, has been producing dairy product in Malaysia for more than 50 years. Uh, nampak lama dah dia bertapak kat negara kita. And then this is another uh, familiar brand kan, Fonterra. Pernah dengar kan Fonterra, macam jenama ni jugalah. Well known in Malaysia for the adult milk brand, Enlin. Uh, kalau sebut Enlin, kenal lah kan. Tapi sebut Fonterra tu macam you are not very familiar. Okay, kalau sebut Enlin, yeah, everybody know. Okay, so the company Malaysia Milk, for example, Vitagen and we also have the Marigold. So this is the uh, company from Malaysia itself lah. Okay, so this is the top 10 global dairy companies uh, from 2012 until 2015. So I have listed a few brand of the companies here. So you can see we have Nestle, Lactose. 
Lacto, Lactales, Danone, Fonterra and so on. Yeah, So, dia punya tu, you can just take a look about their uh, achievement from for the past how many years? 2000, uh, around 3 years. Yeah, For the around 3 years of the uh, production, you can just take a look on their ni, production. Okay, so this one is fresh cow milk production in Malaysia. So as you can see here, what I want to stress is that pada tahun 1970 until 2012, so dia punya fresh milk production is increasing in our country. Nampak ni? The highest in 2011. So this uh, data is until 2011. So you can see that the fresh cow milk is increasing from 1970 until 2011 ah mungkin sebab uh, kita punya apa uh, rakyat kita dah apa mula menekankan pemakanan yang sihat dan mula orang kata berkemampuan so dia memeluk apa dia uh, demand for something nutritious and healthy ah okay, something like that lah okay challenge in the dairy sector so a few challenge uh, in the sector that related to the dairy product, for example, lack of skill and training. For example, farmers kurangan skill and training. That's why, as you can see, as you can see in EMK itself, kita ada offer beberapa training dan juga skill transfer program to the local farmers around here. For example, for the husbandry uh, student, you can see that uh, we have a few uh, project or uh, grant for the uh, from the from our uh, lecturers uh, to help the local farmers to improve their uh, skill and also training. Uh, them to get more skill or more apa better skill untuk uh, ni lah for the husbandry in the husbandry uh, area ya yeah? kita ada banyaklah grant dan juga ni lah training yang kita lakukan sebabnya our farmers is actually, is actually lack of skill and training Okay, next is the low breed performance and inadaptability to local environment, environmental conditions. So as I told you, our uh, climate is not really suitable uh, for the some uh, variety, uh, some breed of the cattle. Dia tak sesuai nak survive macam terlalu panas sangat, tiba-tiba kalau banjir semua. So uh, they are fail to adapt to our local environmental conditions. And then we have poor dairy farm management and inadequate nutritious feed. Ah, maksudnya in term of dairy farm management, kalau dia dah lack of skill and training, lack of knowledge, of course lah kalau farmers tu dia buat juga uh, ladang ternakan ni dia akan jadi dairy farm management lah. Jadi macam kurang kebersihan, kurang aspek kebersihan, tak ambil sutikan vaksin ke, ha, antibiotik ke. So dia akan menyebabkan macam-macam penyakit pula ya. And then that's one can uh, also cause the inadequate nutritious feed ya. So bila dah lack of skill and knowledge and so on. And then, uh, see, so this is uh, one of the main challenge, high input and feed cost. Yeah? Macam saya cakap tadi lah, makan ternakan tu yang agak mahal. Okay, that's why farmers uh, prefer to invest uh, into something that is more profitable. For example, agricultural activities, yeah? compared to the uh, ni lah, uh, ladang ternakan. Yeah? Okay, next is dairy product markets. Okay, let's take a look on the drinking milk product. Okay, we have a few drinking milk product uh, such as flavored milk drinks. Macam-macam flavor milk sekarang kita ada uh, susu pisang, banana kan. Banana kalau coklat tu dah biasa dah. Vanilla pun dah biasa. Strawberry pun dah biasa. Sekarang kita ada banana. Durian pun ada. Kurma pun ada. Uh, so that is the like uh, kata... Uh, improvement in the uh, milk product. Okay, so also, we also have the flavored powdered milk drink. Ha, yang ber, saya nak pada milk drink pun powder pun ada macam-macam flavor milk and also milk powder. Okay, so that is the sales of drinking milk product from 2009 until 2014. Yeah, you can see that uh, the Orang kata apa? The sale is increasing from year to year. For example, the flavored milk drink. Ah, So this is from, uh, to, this is in 2009 and then you can see 2014 it is increased more, uh, almost one, uh, ni lah, satu kali ganda ya, eh? one ni. Uh, and then another product, okay, you can see, uh, oh, I think all of this product is increasing, betul tak? Semuanya meningkat. So maybe you can relate, relate with the uh, awareness uh, of the um, local people towards the healthy lifestyle orang so, semakin uh, sedar ataupun semakin orang kata sedarlah kepentingan ke uh, pemakanan yang sehat that's why they go for the uh, healthy uh, and nutritious drink like milk okay 
Okay next ha. Tadi dah ada cat, dah ada ruminant, non-ruminant Okay semua tu So next is the broiler production So what is the broiler? Broiler is actually any chicken ya Chicken that is bred specifically for the meat production Maksudnya ayam pedaging something like that lah And it, ha it has become one of the important industry in the world Ah, so Di dunia ya So this is one of the main in, uh, industry in the world The broiler industry Okay, in 2017, there were four grandparent stock. Uh, so, this is the gra grandparent stock for the uh, broiler. We call it as GPS, grandparent stock farm that supply 100% of the parent stock chick needed by the preserved seed farm. Maksudnya, kita ada macam ladang yang membekalkan, orang kata baker, kita panggil ni ya, GPS, uh, kepada ladang-ladang lain lah, macam benih lah, benih ataupun baker ayam kepada other farms, okay? Preserve seed farm, ya, yeah? jadi bakar. Okay, so the total production of world broiler meat is estimated to have modest production growth at uh, in 2017 and 2018. Okay, so this is uh, representing a 1.6% change from, uh, nampak peningkatan lah, saya cerita ni peningkatan, you can just read your, uh, apa, by your own, the figure semua-semua tu, tak larang saya nak baca. So, uh, in a simpler word, so the, product, the broiler meat production is increasing from 2017-2018. Okay, in Malaysia, so let's see the current status of broiler production in Malaysia. Broiler become the most important livestock industry and the meat has become the staple food for Malaysia. For Malaysia. Maksudnya... Um, Uh, this chicken is actually become uh, one of the most important industry sebabnya uh, dia dah jadi macam makanan uh, ruji kepada uh, rakyat dengan kita sebabnya ada daging ayam kita buat KFC buat sate, buat ayam panggang semuanya, so dia dah jadi macam staple food for Malaysia semua agama boleh makan ayam tak ada isu semua kan, tak boleh kan okay. so that's why the production of broiler meat in Malaysia, okay. so banyak sikit ya eh, pada tahun 2018 so dia meningkat berbanding dengan tahun 2017 so that you can see that the increment of the uh, broiler meat production in Malaysia Okay, so kita dah achieve ya self-sufficiency ratio since 1984. So kita dah tak perlu import dah ayam ni sebabnya kita boleh uh, we can get the uh, dima, apa the supply from our local uh, production ya. So we already achieve our self-sufficiency uh, ratio since 1984. Dah lama ya kita dah tak ni import. Okay, so this is the uh, okay bilangan ladang peternakan ayam pedaging. Ha. So nampak kalau banding dengan kereta tadi, ayam lagi ramai orang tan, uh, ternak sebab dia lebih menjamin pemulangan yang lumayan dan uh, mempunyai permintaan yang uh, banyak, yang ramai. Okay, so you can see that we have ayam daging, ayam kampung kan. So you can see that we have a few uh, countries here, a number of ladang lah dekat setiap uh, tu countries tu. Okay. So habis dah itu kita masuk pula kepada aquaculture industry. So this is another livestock uh, yang kita akan discuss in this lecture, the, the aquaculture industry. Aquaculture or we also can call aqua farming as actually farming of fish and other sea products such as crustaceans, molas. Ah, ni macam adik-beradik sekerang-kerang, semua tu lah kan, udang-udangan, semua tu aquatic plant or algae and other aquatic organism. So that is aquaculture or aqua farming, yeah? Okay, aquaculture has been identified as one of the main sectors in coming years as part of a global solution to the rapid depletion in the world natural fish stock. Maksudnya kita nak gantikan. We know that our natural fish stock tu semakin berkurang lah sebab di, di, di laut dalam kan. So, semua orang uh, apa nelayan semua pakat duk ni. So, we are becoming, the stock have been uh, depleted from year to year. So, that's why we are trying to shift our uh, natural fish stock to the, ni lah, aquaculture industry. Uh, to the Uh, farming fish, crustacean, molas, and so on. Okay. Aquaculture is generally defined as intensive rearing aquatic organism. Kita tan, kita not tanam, kita bela dia secara intensif, secara besar-besaran organisme aquatic ni in order to achieve the greater production for economic and gastronomic. Gastronomic is actually the art of cooking and eating purpose. Ah, This is more related to the culinary. Ah, Dekat hotel semua dia dah jadi macam uh, masakan tu menjadi satu macam art dah. Satu macam uh, kita boleh design the uh, our dish. Ah, So that one we call it as gastronomic. And then we have the mari, uh, mari culture refers to the in, uh, intensive practice of cultured organism. 
Okay, so either in salt water or brackish water. Sama ada air masin ataupun air payau ya. So, this is the for the mariculture. Culture eh, cultured organism ya. Untuk kita biarkan ni, kita kena culture dulu. And then we have the fishery status in Malaysia which is Malaysia is a net importer of fish in term of quantity. But net importer in term of high quality and fish product. Mm, we offer quite high prices for fishery products ya. Sebab ni agak mahal jugalah uh, harga uh, imported fish in our country. Okay, net importer country on... Um, Okay, that is the meaning of net importer, yeah? country or territory whose value of imported goods and services is higher than its exported goods and services over a given period of time. Maksudnya, harga uh, harga bahan yang diimport tu lebih tinggi daripada yang diexport. Nah, tu kita panggil net importer. Okay, so kita tinggilah uh, dalam kuantiti tu sebabnya but net importer of high quality and fish products. What, but name in term of high value and fish product. So kita tinggi, kita ada high value and fish product tapi kalau kuantiti tu kita kurang. Kita terpaksa import ya. Yeah? Kita baca tak banyak. Pengeluaran ikan tu tak banyak jadi kita terpaksa import. So that's why we call it as net importer of fish in term of quantity. Okay. Okay, so now let's take a look on the factors in aquaculture industry. Ada beberapa factor yang related to the aquaculture industry. Okay, first one is type of aqua, aquatic organism. Okay, yang pertama jenis-jenis uh, organisme aquatic ni, whether animal or plants. And then the second one is environment, kawasan kita nak um, biarkan dia. Okay, for example, fresh water, brackish water or salt water, ke air masin ke air payau ke ataupun air, air biasa ni lah kan. Okay, and then the third one is type of culture techniques or system. Ada beberapa lah. Uh, teknik dia. Okay, for example, we have pond, a raceway, a cage, pen and raft. Okay, so that is the example lah. Kamu tengok. Kalau pond ni kat sini lah. Kita letak gambar-gambar tu ya. Ini teknik uh, untuk uh, culture of the aquaculture. And then the la, apa the fourth one is specific character of environment. For example, kita ada cold water, warm water, upland, uh, inland, pedalaman, coastal, persisiran pantai or estuary. Ah, uh, estuary ni apa ya? Dekat payau ke apa something like that ya? Okay. Kalau saya berbeza. Okay, now let's take a look on the history of aquaculture in Malaysia. Macam mana sejarah aquaculture in Malaysia is uh, began. So normally it began in 1920s with extensive polyculture in ex-mining pools of introduced Chinese carp. Okay, we have uh, the carp, uh, fish is the first one have been introduced in our aquaculture industry. So we have the species of big, big head carp, silver carp and grass carp. Ikan carp lah ya, macam-macam species ada kat sini ya. So this is uh, the first species that have been uh, introduced in our aquaculture industry in Malaysia. Okay, and then in the mid of 1930s, mar marine shrimp trapping pond were first developed in Johor. Kau Johor yang pertama yang kita bina ni lah uh, kolam udang ni kan, uh, marine shrimp ni. And then in the early 1940s, the, the culture of blood cockles, cockles kerang lah ya, uh, telah bermula. And then followed by the mid uh, 1950s by the extensive culture of fresh water fish in earthen pond. Ya. Uh, maksudnya ikan air tawar dekat kolam ni lah. Kolam yang kita macam gali daripada tanah ni. Ada tanah ni kita gali kolam. Lah. So ni kita panggil earthen pond. Ya. Uh, so ini bermula pada tahun 1940s. Okay, most of the carp, ikan carp tadi, which are cultured such as the Chinese carp, Javanese carp and in the Indian carp, ikan carp. Siapa biasa makan ikan carp ya? Di sini kekayangan juga ni kan. Were introduced, ha, dia first introduced by the British in the early 1950s. Okay, however, Indian carp did not did not last long as they compete with the Chinese carps. And their appearance is inferior to that of the Chinese carp. Maksudnya kita ada uh, ni Indian uh, carps ya. So, dia kurang cantik lah berbanding dengan uh, Chinese carp. Nah, so, that's why orang mungkin prefer Chinese carp lah. Okay, so dia tak tak lama industri itu bertahan ya. Mungkin kurang permintaan ya selepas uh, Chinese cut have been introduced ya. And then in the early 1970s, 
great change in aquaculture began to take place when the semi-intensive culture of shrimp was developed in Johor. So starting from here is actually the turning point of the aquaculture industry when we introduced the uh, shrimp uh, pond in Johor. Okay, so by the early 1990s, the aquaculture activities were further enhanced with the, introdu with the introduction of intensive commercial aquaculture with very high stocking density and complete dependent on supplementary feeding. Uh, maksudnya bermula tahun 1990, maksudnya aquaculture activities ni uh, mencapai tahap yang paling uh, maksimum lah. Uh, so kita ada macam uh, intensive commercial aquaculture yang diusahakan secara intensif, secara besar-besaran ya. Untuk uh, ni lah uh, kerang ke udang galah ke ya. Okay, complete dependent on, okay, then kita bergantung kepada ni lah, feeding supplementary, that's why macam-macam uh, lah product supplementary research have been conducted to uh, for the fish feed, for the macam haiwan ternakan ke sebabnya, terutama aquaculture industry lah sebabnya permintaan tinggi, uh, kita ada banyak lah dalam aquaculture so of course lah permintaan terhadap dia punya feed juga akan meningkat, okay, that's why banyak research uh, dan juga banyak ni lah uh, research and development have been conducted ya yeah, to, to fulfill the demand from this industry. Okay, next is Malaysia has considerable growth potential for aquaculture kita ada which, which is quite promising for the aquaculture industry in our country. So major growth sector are as below. This is our major growth sector of the aquaculture in our country. We have shrimp culture in ponds. Yeah? Kita tak um, culturekan uh, udang galah tu udang ke di dalam ni ponds ya. Yeah? So this is, uh, for example, Malaysia has over a hectare of mangrove that can be developed for shrimp culture. Uh, kita ada macam uh, mangrove tu, apa mangrove? Paya bakar, kawasan paya bakar yang kita boleh develop menjadi ataupun tukarkan dia kepada ni lah uh, shrimp culture for ponds, uh, in ponds ya. Okay. And then we have the cage culture of marine fin fish. Uh, boleh juga tanam dalam uh, sangka kan. Protected coastal waters have been identified uh, for cash culture of marine fish. Ada juga lah kita dah uh, protect kita punya perairan kita tu untuk buat ni lah cash culture of marine uh, fin fish. Uh. And then we have the mussel culture, kepakar semua tu. So this is also the growth of this sector is limited to areas of mussel spread fall. Spread fall. Studies indicate that prison capacity may be extended by another. Okay, uh, maksudnya kita dah uh, mula meningkatkan lagi kawasan uh, for the uh, mussel culture lah. Okay, freshwater fish culture in ponds and mining pond boleh juga kita guna untuk uh, apa uh, freshwater fish culture dekat ni lah kawasan lombong semua tu kan kita tukarkan dia kepada uh, ni lah freshwater fish uh, for the culturing of freshwater fish. And then floating cages pun this is another method to uh, culture the freshwater fish kita guna floating cages ya sangka yang terapung macam ni uh, boleh juga. Okay, now let's take a look on the culture species. Ah, uh, species-species yang kita boleh apa? Uh, yang berkaitan lah, yang boleh di uh, ni lah uh, kita bangunkan ataupun kita pro kata apa? Commercialize. Okay, so we have the brackish water species, which is the production of this brackish water species ni uh, around 45% of bivalve molas. Maksudnya kerang-kerangan ya. Yeah? Asyik dia, for example, kita ada blood cockles, kerang lah kot. Ini kerang ya. Yeah? Yang blood cockles, a giant tiger prawn. Ini pun sangat, orang kata very apa, famous lah tiger prawn kan, udang harimau. And then other marine fish, okay. And then we also have the freshwater species. For example, tilapia, dia lah the nama species tu, Nile tilapia, catfish, and also cups. Okay, so this is the culture species that can be kalau kamu berminat. Nak buka uh, aquaculture kan, uh, ladang uh, aquaculture farming. So this is the type of species or, or culture species that can you that you can uh, take into consideration. Nak bela ataupun nak uh, rare yang mana. Okay. So this is for the uh, statistic our total aquaculture production for Malaysia in tons, yeah, in unit tons. Okay. So as you can see, it is increasing in 2010 and decreasing a bit for 2015 nampak dia punya tu macam hmm, kata fluctuate lah dia punya pengeluaran dia kan in Malaysia masih lagi tidak stable ya our uh, production tapi nampak semakin meningkat lah berbanding dengan uh, early years that have that aquaculture have been introduced uh, daripada awal dia diperkenalkan so maksudnya penghasilan aquaculture product tu semakin meningkat 
Okay, so this is our culture production by culture environment in Malaysia. Kita ada uh, marine, freshwater and breakage water ya. Yeah? Air laut, air uh, freshwater dan breakage water ni air apa eh? Uh, air payau lah kan? Okay. Ataupun muara, something like that. Okay, you can make a comparison between these three environment. So, yang biru ni nampak uh, marine water, uh, marine uh, apa environments. So, this is the production. Okay, so yang hijau. Hijau ni fresh water agak banyak juga dan semakin meningkat. Uh, pada awal dulu tak, tak tak mendapat sambutan. Sama juga dengan breakage water. Tapi sekarang ni orang dah mula uh, menerima uh, produk from the breakage water. So, dia akan semakin meningkat lah kat sini. Okay, and next is the world capture fisheries and aquaculture production. Okay, so this is the aquaculture, sorry. This is the aquaculture production with a blue one and then the orange one is the capture production. Hasil tangkapan dan juga hasil pengeluaran. So nampak, um, aquaculture kita walaupun uh, semakin meningkat pengeluaran tapi kita masih lagi bergantung kepada uh, tangkapan ikan daripada deep, uh, apa, hasil laut dalam lah. Uh, so majority kat sini lah kan pengeluaran dia. Okay, we still uh, rely on the amount of fish ca uh, catch from the deep uh, sea fisheries. Okay, ini yang paling banyak lah. Okay, so this is the top 10 global aquaculture producing countries in 2008 by quantity and value. Ini negara-negara pengeluar lah. Kamu tengok lah. Uh, okay, so the top one is China followed by India. Kita ada kat sini ke? Tak ada, tak termasuk ya. Okay. Okay, now let's take a look. Why aquaculture is important? Kenapa? Hmm, very simple lah. Dia, it, because it is a food. And then in Malaysia, it has become a very important source of protein and other essential nutrients and minerals. And then good source of income. Maksudnya, uh, menjanjikan pulangan yang lumayan kepada our farmer. So we can say that it can improve our uh, quality life. Uh, okay. And then potential export earner. Boleh juga di export ya. Yeah? Kita boleh ada potensi untuk diexport, And then for the food security purpose ah, Sebab macam kita ah, Saya dah mention sikit tadi ah, Ikan, sumber ikan laut dalam tu semakin berkurangan Depleted ya, dia punya sources So that's why we need to ah, think ah, The source of the ah, protein ah. So that's why we ah, Come up with the aquaculture industry ah, To replace or to as another Alternative for the ah, Deep sea ah, Deep sea fish, okay And then it can be processed into other product. For example, boleh jadi ega or carrageenan. I don't know what is carrageenan. You can Google. Tapi maksudnya dia boleh, aquaculture ni boleh jadi juga untuk diproses kepada produk-produk uh, lain. Uh, untuk buat ega contohnya. And then aquaculture also contributed to the pharmaceutical or cosmeceutical. Kita boleh juga guna untuk kosmetik ya. Mungkin uh, source daripada udang. Kita boleh isolate, boleh buat apa. Bahan untuk digunakan dalam kosmetik ataupun bahan untuk apa farmasi ke buat ubatan semua tu kan. And then it can also provide variety of product and materials from this aquaculture itself. And then provide employment. Ah, So ini, ini juga sebagai related dengan good source of income lah. Dia memberikan orang kata peluang pekerjaan to more than 22,000 of fish farmers. Ah, So of course lah with the, with the help of the uh, government incentive. Government akan bantulah dia akan bagi beberapa incentive dan juga uh, dorongan kepada fish farmers ini. And then uh, it also can provide income and economic returns for the those uh, fish farmers. Okay. Okay, next is advantages in aquaculture development. Okay, first we have advantages in terms of strategic location. Okay, because we are strategically located in the middle of Southeast Asia. Malaysia is an important producer, market and trading nation of fish and fishery product in the region. So, kawasan kita ni strategik lah dekat Southeast Asia ya. So, kita boleh menjadi um, sebagai pengeluar yang penting uh, kawasan apa marketing uh, place for the trading untuk kata apa sistem perdagangan antarabangsa and so on lah. And then we also have the good climate condition ah, because we are free from natural disaster macam earthquake ke, volcanoes ke. So negara kita tak ada. So this country is very conducive to aquaculture and fishing industry. Ah, Sesuai lah uh, digunakan tanah yang available kat our country ni is a good uh, place for this um, industry. And then we also blessed with abundant fisheries resources. 
Okay, for example, the country's fish production in 2011 was close to 2.0 million tons, comprising 1.47 million tons of wild catches and six uh, and so on lah tons of aquaculture product, including seaweed. Ah, uh, so kita ada juga seaweed ya, dia punya. Uh, dah mula mula terkenal dia sekarang ni seaweed ya uh, rumpai laut ke something like that lah so kita banyaklah daripada sumber lautan kita tu kita boleh contribute banyak ataupun kita boleh uh, dapat banyak hasil fisheries resources from our uh, seas and then we also have this is one of the important uh, thing is the strong government backup kita ada macam-macam we have all type of uh, policies to support our local farmers and uh, fishermen okay so this is what we call as strong government backup where the incentive loan ke pinjaman ke kan ah so itu juga mainkan peranan uh, to apa help the aquaculture industry uh, develop okay but we also have the problem adalah saya list uh, sedikitlah juga problems in aquaculture uh, biasalah lack of skilled labor kita kekurangan uh, tenaga yang uh, ke ber, apa berkepakaranlah okay and then we also have the environmental issues uh, walaupun kita ada earthquake or volcano tapi pollution uh, maksudnya industrial pollution and then the climate for example macam uh, flood ke tiba-tiba banjir kan uh, so habis kolam tu tadi akan uh, hasil akan uh, ni mati ataupun hilang macam tu saja kan and then we also have a problem with land and water resources ah uh, sebab kadang land tadi tu dia ada competition for other industry or for example for the agricultural activities that have uh, apa promising a more promising income yang menjanjikan peluang yang lebih lumayan lah okay and then water resources juga kadang kita ada sumber air yang mungkin uh, limited yang tercemar okay and then feed ah feed ni macam saya cakap tadi lah agak mahal ya fish meal and fish oil ni macam uh, quite uh, expensive ya so dia akan mempengaruhi jugaklah pengeluaran aquaculture and then we have other disease that's why uh, we have a uh, government also this is the where the government should play the important role uh, to come up with the research and de development plan uh, to tackle the disease in the aquaculture industry uh. so because aquaculture also exposed to various of uh, bacterial infection fungal infection virus ke tak tahulah so this kind of disease uh, should be tackled uh, by the researchers uh, from the government incentive itself okay and then we also have the issues with the food safety and quality okay kita bila dah ada penyakit semua tu adalah uh, isu dengan food safety and quality kepada aquaculture product and then seed production ah pengeluaran dia juga high quality so macam bila high quality tu maksudnya agak mahal jugaklah orang nak purchase nak beli kan so this is also become one of the limitation to the aquaculture industry Okay, so this that's all for today. So I put the tilapia product here. So we have uh, a few tilapia product. Bukan saja kita makan secara freshly consumed. We also have processed it into the other products. So mungkin this one I think maybe uh, tofu or something like that. Yeah? Okay, so that's all for today. Any question before I ended our um, lecture today? Any question? If no, I will stop with that. I will stop. The recording first.